<sighs> Hello. Uh, I'm gonna stand up for this for you, I think. I think I'm, <laughs> I'm more comfortable up here. Uh, I've always uh, done the chair thing, Emajig, but today we're doing something different. There's a new Belfast film came out called by Kenneth Branagh. I don't have much time for Kenneth Branagh. I think he's a fucking twat. Uh, Kenneth Branagh is a director. He's also an actor. As a director, I don't really rate him too much. The only thing I've seen of his is the Thor film from 2011, early MCU entry. Um, very bland from what I recall. Not much artistic flair that he added to that one. I feel like he mainly specialises in factory films, easy to digest sort of stuff. However, with Belfast, I was interested to see it because it looked to be like a personal film for Kenneth Branagh, as it's essentially about his life growing up in Ireland, in Belfast. So I thought, okay, this might be like a Woody Allen deal or like a Martin Scorsese deal, whether but they're familiar with New York or whatever. Okay, I'm not doing this. It's going to kill in my back. Hang on. I'm not going to review the Oscar nominees this year, but Belfast is among one of those that's been nominated for Best Picture, if you can believe it. Now, in all aspects, Belfast is a perfectly competent film. It's got some great British actors, solid performances. The kid, however, isn't as good as he was hyped up to be. He's just kind of like, yeah... He's all right. I think I see less of a kid and just a kid trying to act, a child actor trying to act. Production design's all solid because they have to recreate an old era of Belfast in the 60s. The problem is, and bear in mind, this is a film called Belfast. This is a film where the location is supposed to be its own character. Belfast is supposed to have its own character, like a, such a big presence in the film. Kenneth Branagh fails to flesh out anything in this film. Themes aren't properly explored, just merely hinted at, characters aren't properly developed. The story is very bare bones, but that's okay, that could have worked because it's supposed to be a slice of life film. It's more so about the daily goings on of the characters, but the characters are one note. There's perfectly good acting here, but something, something's amiss. Because like actors like Judy Dench and the guy who plays Mance Raider, who's awesome, they were doing such a good job with the material they were given. I just don't think there was any actual material there. None of the characters are three-dimensional. They have the exact same kind of conversations in each scene as they did in the last one. It's just about, oh, the granddad gives the kids some advice on girls. And you get it. You get it in the first fucking time they do it, but that's like, it doesn't go anywhere. The kid isn't interesting. The story isn't interesting. The emotions of the characters are just minimal and glossed over and not properly delved into. There's no real meat to this story. It left almost no impression on me afterwards. I was like, I'm, I was pr I'm pretty sure that was an okay film because you know it's all perfectly well shot and everything there's some good cinematography in here that's in service of nothing it's like purposeless it's trying to add emphasis to something that just isn't there you can take a leave the black and white that doesn't really play into it either obviously because it's a period piece fine if you've seen the trailer you've kind of got the gist of the entire film. That's the problem. You can kind of digest the entire identity of each character in their first scene, and there's nothing else to go off from then. And it is fairly boring and dull because it's just a predictable, light, nothing movie. And it's very forgettable, and it's just a shame. I think what happened was that Kenneth Branagh went into this project already thinking that it was inherently profound, like the story, just because it's his upbringing. And he didn't make any effort at relaying that profundity to the audience. He just thought, oh yeah, this is great, this is fine, oh, I'll just, yeah, just film it, yeah, I'll just do it. And it's wishy-washy, there's nothing really there. I remember in primary school, they said in English literature or whatever, one of the exams was write a big essay where you're essentially describing your favourite food to an alien. So imagine if I just put such little effort into communicating why the pizza is so tasty and lovely, and I just assumed, oh, well, the alien's just going to get it because it's fucking pizza, in it. I don't care what the alien's thinking. This is all me. I'm just fucking indulging myself and writing how much I fucking love pizza. It's a mental masturbation. That'll be a disaster because the alien will have no idea because that's the whole point of creative writing and literature it's not just about what you think, it's communicating it 
and making the viewer, the reader, the audience experience the same emotion, which Kenneth Branagh didn't fucking do. And I learned how to do that in year fucking three or some shit. <laughs> fucking idiot. So Ken would have just written about his favourite food and not taken into account that the alien has no preconceived idea or notion what this fucking food is. You just think, oh yeah, it's fucking great. I love it when films showcase the environments that they take place in and the settings, even if they're real places or not. For instance, the New York in Taxi Driver is its own character. The New York in all the Woody Allen's films is its own character. I know Woody Allen's a pedo, so whatever, but he was still made good films. But in the case with Belfast, if we just pretend that the Belfast in the film's universe is supposed to be its own character, it's just as one-dimensional as all of the human characters in the film. It's a well-designed set, but that's all it is. It doesn't feel like it's flowing with life, which is what this entire film is supposed to be. It's supposed to make the audience fall in love with Belfast, just as much as the kid already does. We barely get a sense of the community of this place. We see, like, minimal scenes of the other characters who live there. Just a storyteller who's doing his fucking job would have done this right. Like, it's supposed to be personal, but this is what happens when you have your head so far up your own ass and you're not thinking about the audience. You're not thinking like, okay, well, this has to be a story. I need to share these emotions, but I haven't because I'm not eloquent enough, I guess. Well, I don't know, but I just thought it was shit. It should have been like a vibrant hub of life, like Delfino Plaza. <laughs> I didn't even think I was going to do a review on this because I had so little to say. I was like, oh, maybe it was a fine film. Maybe, you know, I just... I think it's such a nothing film. Kenneth Branagh seems to be grandfathered in to the establishment, like Hollywood, at least in the British scene, like the London scene. Everyone in Britain just like worships the ground he walks on. So he never feels the need to develop his skills as an artist. And like, I haven't seen your old shit, mate. I'm just going off fucking Thor from 2011. I'm not impressed yet. Fucking pull a finger out, you're a filmmaker. It's supposed to be bloody hard. But by the way, there is a reference to that. There's a scene when uh, the kid is reading a Thor comic book. That's a little nod to the fact that Kenneth Branagh directed Thor. That's for the like, ooh, the Easter eggs. One day I might watch one of Kenneth Branagh's old films. I think he did Hamlet and I might really like that. Sure, you know, but doesn't excuse this one. A good act does not wash out the bad nor a bad the good. Now, nah, this is, um, no one needs to see this movie. You really don't. It's really like, it's like a grandma film. It's super inoffensive, light, easy to digest, crowd pleaser. This film isn't even as good as Thor. I'm pretty sure Thor is better because Thor has a story. You know, it has the bit where he gets cast out and he has to earn, he has to be honourable and learn how to be like all humble or whatever to be worthy, to be worthy of the hammer. That's a story. You should, someone should tell Kenneth Branagh that. He should have said, oh, listen, no, no, you did it here. You did it. No, right there. You, you did it in 2011, Ken. You did a story. Yeah, it's just the Thor and the hammer, you know, that it's like, you know how there's like a character arc and there's an actual fucking like point to the movie, you know. It's pretty easy once you just like get the hang of it. Yeah. That's embarrassing. I mean, Thor had that bit where he smashes a coffee cup on the floor that everyone loves. Belfast didn't have that. It's actually really hard to get round here because there's so much shit in the way. Oh. When the camera's over here, Mike, I've fucked up the position of the mic, so I go, Hello, speak in the mic, speak in the mic. Okay, it's better. Maybe I'm too far away.